Hi, it's Caleb from Bubblebee Industries, and in this video I'd like to talk a bit about um, wind protection, and in particular uh, the difference between wind and sound, and uh, how that affects the tools that you use out in the field. We know uh, sound is the vibration of air molecules at a specific frequency or frequencies, and if you look at the definition of wind, it's the movement of air molecules, those same air molecules, from point A to point B. Um, the sound energy doesn't require that the molecules are moving. They vibrate in their space. Um, and in wind energy where the molecules are moving, it is also possible for sound to be transmitted. And that means that the molecules are vibrating as well while moving as a group from point A to point B. A nice way to think about it is if you threw a pebble into a lake, there would be ripples forming around the point where that pebble entered the water, um, but they would be still, uh, the point would be still in space. And if you threw that same pebble into a moving river, um, there would be ripples forming around where that pebble entered the water, um, but that point would be moving. Um, so. How do we protect our mics from wind in the field? Um, and it's very important to understand, um, first and foremost, the, the type of microphone you're using plays a big role in that. Um, if you're using an omnidirectional microphone, like a lavalier mic, they are generally a little more resilient against wind um, because the diaphragm is actually a thicker material than that of their directional microphone counterparts. Um, in a directional mic, and I've got one here, I've got the Sennheiser uh, 416. Take the wind killer off. Um, in a directional mic, um, the directionality is achieved by having um, air gaps in front of and behind the diaphragm. And it's an open system then. And what the diaphragm does is it measures the, the difference between the sound energy entering the, the front through the interference tube and the back um, through the air vents behind it. And it measures the phase difference and the difference between the sound energy coming in the back and in the front is, is often because you're subtracting one from the other, it's, it's smaller. So it's quite a soft material, very susceptible to handling noise um, and very susceptible to wind energy um, potentially overloading the diaphragm. Um, and conversely, the, the omnidirectional mic is a sealed unit, the diaphragm, so it contains uh, pressure inside uh, the capsule and the back plate, and it measures the pressure all around the mic, causing those two objects to interact and create voltage um, differences. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about how then to protect the uh, shotgun microphone because that's very important and we've got some products to do that. We've got the wind killer range and the spacer bubble or spacer kit range and um, they're both designed with these things in mind. So the ideal wind protection for a shotgun mic is something that buffers the wind but allows the sound energy to transmit through um, and bearing that in mind that um, Bearing in mind that, that wind makes a noise when it hits a surface, any flat surface and the harder the surface, the more uh, and the more the more friction noise there will be probably. Uh, yeah, we also decided to make our products with a multi-pile fur, and um, it's got three uh, different lengths of fur. So down near the where it, where the fur is connected to the the foam, it uh, it's very short fur and very densely packed and then it, it becomes less dense and longer uh, away from it. Um, and then on the inside we use an acoustical foam. It's a very open foam. It holds pockets of air in the foam. Um, and that is to keep a neutral space around the microphone in, in order to keep the, the frequency response as natural as possible. So yeah, the wind killer is a one piece unit with this uh, acoustically transparent foam on the inside and the fur attached to it, uh, covering it on the outside. So the fur slows down the wind from the outside coming in and then uh, the foam holds a natural space of air, which is still 
around the microphone capsule. And then we've got a rubber base on all of them, um, and that seals off the interference tube. Uh, it's designed to seal off the active part of the microphone from any wind buffeting and stuff like that. So if you put this on with the rubber base, the entry hole, right over the diaphragm, and you don't properly cover the air gaps potentially behind it. Um, different microphones look a bit different. I think the, um, the Schoeps variations and the DPA variations and um, Sennheiser variations have a slightly different look where the diaphragm is, but you should learn where that is and how to cover those vents behind it as well. And then slide the wind killer all the way over those vents and then make sure that it's not too uh, bunched up so that the end of the interference tube is bunched or pushed into the foam um, to get the best result. Um, yeah, so the wind killer comes in two different uh, styles and five different sizes. And we also have two different base sizes, so entry holes on the back. So we have a short fur, fur version, which is this, and we have one with long fur, which I'll show you as well. And the long fur is the standard one, so when you buy a wind killer, um, you get the long fur wind killer. Um, and that's with the long fur, which is this kind of length. Um, and then that's the short fur, and that's bonded there. So, uh, yeah, and five different sizes, so they cover up to, well, we've counted over 50 uh, popular shotgun mics on the market. And yeah, the short fur is really useful if you're working more indoors or in light winds, um, where you're not going into heavy winds. And um, it looks neater as well. If you were to mount it on a camera, um, it makes sure that you're not going to have any fur extending into the camera frame as well. And it's really good at protecting, uh, but protect, protecting against uh, boom swinging noises. So if I, if I was to remove it. Um, and so that's the Sennheiser 416. Um, and if you swing the boom, you pick up, um, swishing noises where the wind is um, affecting the diaphragm. So if I put the wind killer back on, and we do the same thing, there you can hear that really protects it from the wind. And that's what it sounds like with a wind killer on. And yeah, what you need to remember about wind protection like this is anything you put over the diaphragm of the mic uh, is going to uh, change the frequency response of the mic. Uh, any objects you put over it doesn't matter whether it's a blimp or a slip on uh, wind protective cover like this. Um, the uh, upper frequencies from, yeah, anywhere, well, from about 6K and up do tend to uh, take a little hit, um, but it's a compromise because you need to find the right balance between wind protection and transparency. And uh, that's also a reason why we have two fur lengths on the wind killer. So you can choose whether you want uh, more transparency and a lighter fur or a thicker fur, longer fur and um, more wind protection. So. Uh, in that vein, we also created a new product um, called the Spacer Kit, or the Spacer Bubble. And that's, in essence, a modular solution. So um, that offers you the option. So you have one, one system or one unit, and it's modular. It offers you the option um, to choose how much wind protection and how much of a, a transparent sound you'd like for your, your mic. So. Um, it comes with two parts. The spacer bubble comes with a spacer base, um, which is uh, constructed with the same rubber base, which takes the microphone and seals it off inside the acoustically transparent foam with this spacer mesh on the outside, which is um, uh, acoustically tested as well. It's pretty transparent. And then it's got a leather band around the top to uh, 
um, to hold it together. And that fits the microphone very snugly, covers up the microphone and holds it in a uh, sealed off space that allows the sound through. And that by itself uh, would be used indoors. It protects against boom swinging. This spacer mesh on the outside is an extra addition. On the wind killer, you only have um, the foam on the inside and the fur is bonded directly to that. So this actually adds an extra layer having the mesh on the outside and this transparent material here to which the fur is bonded. And you can actually see the fur through it. Um, but we, we thought about our materials very meticulously for these products. Um, and how it works is uh, when this is on, this is perfect for internal use. So if you're using, uh, and again, it comes in five different sizes, lengths. Um, so this one would be okay for the, this, uh, I think the, um, the uh, DPA 4018C or mics of that kind of form. And then with the large base, the mount at the back, you can use it for the Sennheiser MKH 40 or 50. And yeah, that's very transparent. We did a video in the desert uh, testing the transparency and I'll show you just a few seconds of that now. And then we can hear how the bass is sounds like. It sounds crispy and clear and it's kind of like not having anything on so you can see and hear the transparency of the bass by itself there and you can watch that video in full on our youtube channel so check it out after this um if you were to be on uh if you were on a, a production that moved from different from one space into another and there were different environmental uh, factors um, you can very quickly with the spacer bubble um, add fur or remove fur, depending on whether you're moving from indoors to outdoors or the opposite. Uh, and to add the fur, the fur is, um, again, it's the multi-pile fur and the spacer bubble comes with the short fur cover and that fits over the spacer base. And then there's a little draw tag, you pull it all the way over. It's also got a leather band at the bottom. So uh, it's very high spec materials and you tighten the draw tag and then uh, normally if this is on a boom I would say uh, you would put the elastic over one of the suspension um, knobs just to keep it out the way and stop it from flapping around and that then effectively uh, will handle medium and light winds uh, very effectively um, and uh, still retain a lot of the transparency of your microphone. If you were to go into a, a, an environment with higher winds, I would suggest getting the spacer kit, or if you have the spacer bubble already, you can buy the long, uh, long fur cover uh, as an additional, uh, additional accessory. And that um, fur is much longer. You can see it's got an extra pile um, of very long fur in there, and that is very wind protective. So you slip off the short, short fur cover and the long fur cover just slips over. It's much easier when the mic's in the base and this is on a boom. And then again, you tighten the tab and control it. And that is the spacer bubble with the long fur cover. And that is very good. We tested that in the Grand Canyon with wind speeds of up to 24, 25 miles an hour. Um, and it functions incredibly well. Um, we are confident that this is um, up to 80%, 90% as effective as using a bigger blimp. Um, for 80% of the situations you'll be in regularly, this will be absolutely fine. Um, the benefit, I suppose, is that you can change between, um, you can change your uh, transparency basically by simply removing the fur when you go indoors. And then you're actually back to getting all the good frequencies that your microphone naturally picks up. Um, because the, the natural frequency response of the mic is what you pay for. Um, and it's a lot of money, a, a big investment in microphone, a good microphone. So you generally want to be able to use what the microphone has to offer. And that's why we created the Spacer Bubble. So there you go. That's uh, our take on, on the slip-on uh, wind protection um, products. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions, um, 
please uh, don't hesitate to ask. We'll be on and uh, catch us on social media. Also check out our website. All the information's there. It's bubblebeeindustries.com. And also um, check out our YouTube channel because we have plenty of demos and uh, instructional videos and help videos and plenty of stuff, uh, anecdotal stuff. Um, it's youtube.com forward slash Bubblebee Industries. Uh, it's great to be at the Sound Summit and thanks for your time. Um, have a windy day. <laughs>